Hi everyone. So today's session is a very lightweight session and the name of the topic is keeping your business model light, right? So what happens is that, you know, many people, many entrepreneurs, they feel like in order to set up a business or to grow their business, they need a lot of money. They need a lot of capital resources. They need to have a lot of resources on their family side, or they need a lot of stability, or they need money for next three, four years to sustain themselves in order to set up a business, right? Or if that's not the case, then many times the case is that they try to build heavy assets in their business. They try to buy land. They try to buy assets depending on what they, what business they are doing, right? They try to buy these resources. And what happens is that later on, they're not even able to build their business because they were investing their energy in the wrong place, wrong time. So the topic that I'm going to cover today is going to allow you to get out of that mindset and will allow you to understand what's the right way, what's the perfect way to get past these barriers. You don't want to build assets in your business and why you shouldn't want to and how you get past that barrier, right? So today's topic is going to cover all those things. Um, so I guess the best way to explain this concept is to start with a story, Santa Banta and Papu, right? Before I start with the story, I just want to recap one more time that when you are starting your business, you don't want to build your own assets. You want to use assets of other people, whether it's money, right? whether it's you know for example you are in a cab business right so you don't want to try to buy cabs right you want to keep your business lightweight right and the more lightweight your business is the quicker you will grow and the heavier your business is, the more assets you try to own in your business, the slower your progress will be. But the only asset that you want to focus on building, the only asset, right? Only asset that you want to focus on building, only assets. There are two assets. Number one, skills, your own skills. And number two, your team. These are the only two things you need to focus on building. You need to build, you need to start your, uh, you, you need to reach the point where you can start building your team as soon as possible. But team about what exactly, right? There are two parts in business, front end and back end right front end and back end for most businesses it makes sense to build a team for start building the team for front end side as soon as possible and that's the quickest way that reduces the energy required for you to speed up the progress of growing your business so you want to build your team for the front end side front end meaning marketing sales or creating design assets. For example, you know, you need people to maintain front end parts of your business. For example, your website, your other things, uh, creating, you know, nice, nice videos or those type of things, right? Marketing sales, um, PR collaborations and PR, right? Public relations, those type of things come in the front end side and it requires a lot of work for example it needs work in designing it needs work in uh, building funnels parts of funnels right um it needs so many different things photo shoots right all those things uh, creating content right depending on what what business you are in right uh branding all those things require work 
So you need to start building your team for all those things as quickly follow-ups with people, right? You don't want to invest your own time in follow-ups with your clients or prospects, right? You want to have people to follow up with you or prospecting. You, you want to have people for prospecting work. You want to spend your time on closing people, right? You don't want to spend time in prospecting, right? So all those things should be done by a team. And initially, when you don't have money, you, can, uh, you don't have as much money, you can start with hiring virtual assistants, right? Very cheap people. And later on, once you have a lot of money coming in because you have optimized your front end side, you've optimized your sales process, everything is perfect. Then you can hire even full time people. You can hire full time people in your office or you can hire full time people. They can work from their home, right? Especially during Corona, right? But the point is that you need to start building your team as soon as possible. Skills is the first principle, right? Second comes your team because skill building skill is an ongoing process, right? It's an ongoing process. It never stops, but you need to reach the point of start building your team as quickly as possible. And that's the only asset that you want to focus on building. You don't want to focus on building any other assets because most assets, they exist in the world use those assets first if there is an asset that does not exist in the world and you need to work on building it use resources from other people use resources from investors if you try to do it yourself you're not going to reach anywhere let me give you one story about santa banta and papu right so santa banta and papu so Santa Banta, right, they wanted to start their own business, right? So they, they decided they want to build a business in cabs, providing cab rides to people, right? Cabs, cab business, tourism, right? Tour and travel type of business, right? Cab, cab businesses, it comes in the category of like tourism or travel, those type of things, right? So what they do, right? not the best people in the world not not the smartest people in the world they decide that they want to have they want to start their business with three cabs first right so they buy three cabs using their own money oh, sorry I, I missed a phase they start their business with one ca uh, one cab right so they use their money to get one cab right and then sometimes Santa was using that cab. Sometimes Banta was using that cab. They distributed the workload. They distributed the money investment, right? But the point is that they invested the money in one cab, right? So that they can see if they are uh, they are able to expand it. They are able to find customers and they are able to make some money. They already did some research in past by looking at other business models, right? So they optimized that pro process by learning by looking at others. But they did not optimize this part of the business that they started building their own assets right so they purchased one cab required some investment they made that investment they made they did all the formality work everything and they started the business right they're getting customers they're getting good number of customers great right so they are making some money their business is going great right now they want to expand further right so after doing their business for like six months Right, they got enough money to be able to afford three more cabs. So get they get three cabs, right? And they get three dri drivers to drive those cabs. Right? And they are they have optimized their business model, they have done everything else perfectly great. They have they are providing cab services to uh you know foreign uh foreigners. This uh, foreigners spend a lot of money. In traveling right they, they have a lot of money they can spend that money right so they're providing really good services professional services to those customers and they're making really really good money right for each ride they're making like a hundred dollars whereas other cab businesses they make like uh, five dollars ten dollars twenty dollars right maximum but you know santa banta even though they're not as smart as Papu, but they're smart enough to optimize other parts of their business model, right? So they did everything perfectly. They are able to charge $100 per 
uh, per 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 right right because foreigners they spend a lot of money so they are making really good money with these three cabs these three drivers they don't have to spend much money on uh, uh, to pay the salary of these drivers right then you know what happens you know they want to expand further right so after like 3 years 3 years they get 10 more cabs right 10 cabs 10 drivers and that's how they continue to grow their journey for next 10 years they continue to uh, continue to own more and more cabs as many cabs as they can handle and then the more cabs they own they realize that the more cabs they own the bigger problems come for example one day what happened a driver got into an accident the car got destroyed car got destroyed the passengers were hospitalized driver was hospitalized now they were covered with insurance right but you know the more cabs they own the more risk they have to deal with what they have to deal with litigations court cases so what happens and you know other i'm just giving one type of uh, problem but there are other types of problems as well they have to manage other types of things like licenses they have to renew all the management work they have to do they have to keep track of all the drivers uh, whether uh, the driver is not stealing something right high quality cabs they, they are stealing parts from the car and selling it in black market right drivers there they have their own strategies of optimizing their uh, revenue making right unethics uh, unethical processes that they uh, do so they have to so santa banta have to deal with all those things right now let's look at what pappu does And even after 10 years, Santa Banta had only 10 cabs, right? 10 years, 10 cabs, because they got busy with handling all the different problems that they were facing. The more cabs that come, the more people they have to manage, right? And they're not making as much cash flow. Cash flow is $100, right? $100 per, right? That's, that's the cash flow. It's a good cash flow, but it's being spent on handling the problems as well spent uh, expenses right now what pappu does so pappu same exact scenario he wants to set up a cab company so the first thing he does right he looks at santa banta that's what they did right now is there a better procedure that i can grow quicker they took 10 years to grow the business from zero caps to 10 caps can i speed that process up because they did it in 10 years, right? So it's obviously possible to achieve this level. But is it possible to speed up the process? Is there any other level? If there is, if this is level 10, is there any level 11, right? So he analyzes, he does all the analysis, and then he comes up with a strategy. So what's the strategy? He first goes to a software, uh, a, so a software guy his friend right software guy right his friend and he convinces the friend that you know let's you know cab business really uh, really lucrative market right and people need cabs to travel everywhere and especially during corona right uh, people need safety in their uh, you know in, in their travel because they are worried about getting infected with coronavirus or whatever right he built a logical case he convinced his friend that we should start a cab business all we have to do is build one software right build one software we need to just build one app right and you can build that app in like three four days it's not it's not it's a, it's a you know you have the skills to do it right and we just need to build an app and we get started right away right so the friend he thinks sure yeah it does not take as much time and what do i have to lose there's nothing to lose if i you know if we don't even succeed in cab business i will have one 
uh, software that I, I can use in my resume, right? Uh, there's nothing to lose. So what's the worst that can possibly happen, right? Nothing to lose here. So he agrees, right? He builds that software, right? Application to um, manage the cab drivers and the passengers, right? And then what Papu does is that he reaches, he goes out there to investors, right? Investors, right? So he says, he gives a pitch to the investor that, hey, uh, I have a really cool business model, right? All we need is $100,000, right? And, you know, we'll make this much money. Really cool business model, right? I want to set up a cab company and I'm passionate about it. I've been planning about it since past so, so many months. I've did my research and I'm going to make it happen. All I need is your support. You don't have money problems. I don't have resource problems. We can collaborate together, right? And we can make this happen. You are using that money in your, you, ha you have that money in your bank account, which is doing nothing there. Let me use it for you. Let me make that, uh, let, let me make money from your money. Let me give you some profits, right? So the investor is like, gives objections, right? Bro, I don't know you. How can I trust you? Those type of things. Or how, how do I know that your business model, like uh, you'll actually do the work or you are capable, capable to do the work, right? Those type of objections, right? So what Papu, uh, what Papu does, he says, sure, uh, sounds fair. You don't know me right now. So let me do this right don't give me hundred thousand dollars right right away right let me first show you what i can do for you for five thousand dollars right five thousand dollars hundred thousand dollars it's a lot of money and you don't trust me right now so let me show you what i can do for you with just five thousand dollars if i'm able to build if i'm able to uh progress Right. If I if I make a really good progress with, with the small amount of money, even with the small amount of money. Right. Then you will have better trust. You will know that I'm a guy who's passionate about this project and I'll make this project a success. Right. And if for some reason I use that money, but I'm not able to make progress, you don't lose much. Right. Five thousand dollars is not a big amount. Right. Investor says, sure, let's do it. Let's try it. There's nothing to lose. He gives him five thousand dollars, right? Now, what Papu had, he already had some resources, right? And what he does, he builds some more resource. He collabs with more people. Uh, he collabs with cab drivers. He convinces them, right? Hundred cab. He approaches hundred cab drivers. He convinces them that okay, if you join our platform, right? This is this is the amount of money you will make. We are going to provide you with rides uh, with passengers you're going to drop them off it'd be very easy you'll make really good money you're uh, you are a cab driver right now working at uh, working yourself you're not making as much money if you work with us you'll make a lot more money right because we are going to provide you better quality passengers who spend more money on cab rides right so he gets 100 cab drivers easily right so all he needs to show to this investor in order to win his trust is the software number one and then the resources that he built 100 cab drivers right so he goes back after two three months to the investor that look investor you paid me five thousand dollars i did so much work i built this software right with the help of my friend and i got 100 cab drivers i built a community of cab drivers and they are passionate about it. They are, they are, they are passionate about starting the work, right? So I proved myself to you, right? So investor gets impressed. He pays him hundred thousand dollars, right? So what does he do next? Next step, he takes, he uses that hundred thousand dollars, and builds a back end team. Back end uh, team. To manage, sorry, not the back end, front end team. Front end team. Right? To manage the marketing operations. 
because he cannot do all the marketing he's already doing a lot of work he is he's approaching investors right he approached cab drivers he cannot approach everyone in the world right so he needs a team marketing and sales team to get customers to do collaborations with people to have to penetrate the market right so he builds a marketing team front end team to handle the marketing operations right and he starts generating customers right he starts doing collaborations with influencers to build his brand or whatever right and he hires 10 people basically hires 10 people skilled people right he has the money hundred thousand dollars he hires 10 skilled people right and that those skilled people they start working on the marketing side he has marketing budget so what he does he focuses only on getting more and more investors Papu himself right marketing team works on doing other things like getting uh, building the uh, awareness and getting customers and doing collaborations with influencers and those, those type of things and he focuses his time on getting more investors each investor gives him hundred thousand dollars right and the more money he gets the more money he invests into marketing operations and also he builds his backend he starts to build his backend team as well backend team right and backend team does all the backend work like operational management operational management right within three years they have 100 cabs Papu has 100 cabs, 100 drivers, and many pa uh, passengers who are coming. What Santa Banta had in 10 years, 10 cabs, 10 drivers. Right? So, setting, so, uh, you know, Joji and Ankita, yesterday I was making this video about energy reduction and they both told me that you know setting high goals means you have to put in more energy but that's not true if you set a high goal you have to put less energy you get more results with putting same amount of because you can put only same amount of energy you have only 24 hours a day the only uh, only energy that you invest is distributed on 20 on those 24 hours there is no way for you to put any more there are, you cannot make 24 hours into 50 hours in one day so you can invest only same amount of energy what matters is that how much progress you make with that energy Papu makes bigger progress because he keeps his business model lightweight and Santa Banta makes slower progress because he uh, because they keep their goals small achievable Papu keeps his goals high and Santa Banta they keep their goals small so that what happens when you keep your goals small and so with that i want to end the session i just want to recap one more time right so you have to keep your business model your business model lightweight use other people's assets papu used assets from other people he used the cabs of other people the drivers owned those cabs already right and investors he used money from investors he used the software from his friend he did not do anything on those sides the only work only real work that he did was to convince everybody was to use their resources was to collaborate with them that's the job of an entrepreneur entrepreneur's job is to convince everyone to make things happen if you are not in sales if you are an entrepreneur and you don't know how to convince people then you are a shitty entrepreneur you don't deserve we don't deserve to be an entrepreneur if we are not able to convince people right so and the first thing that we need to do you know uh, you know when we have that skill is that we want to keep our business model light because that's the purpose of learning the skill to convince people you are convincing people why why are you convincing people so that you can keep your business model lightweight if you are trying to build everything yourself, you're not going to make progress. 
and you are go going to get stuck and you are going to live an average life and you are going to die an average life and you're not going to make any difference to the world if you were not born the world world would have been the same way if you are born and you are able to change the world that's when you have the power the only way you get the power is by setting high goals and by keeping your business model lightweight so with that i want to end the session i will let you guys ask me any questions joji any questions your mic is mute Yeah, hello. I don't have any questions. Try, try, try asking one question. The the hundred caps that uh, Papu won after three years was it purchase or was it uh, higher? You know, like this. So, caps, so Papu did not. Right, right. So the question is, when Papu had hundred caps, was he purchasing those caps? if he was purchasing those caps he was not able to get the 100 caps he was not purchasing the caps santa banta were purchasing the caps right so the difference between the story between pappu and santa banta is that santa banta they were trying to own every asset they were investing money they were investing energy into everything right and pappu was not investing energy into owning everything only energy that he was investing was to collaborate with people and he was using their resources so cab drivers already had the cabs so pappu pappu did not have to buy those cabs that was initially when he started the business correct when he started the business he uh, collaborated with other drivers and uh, cabs were arranged in that way instead of purchasing he uh, he collaborated with the existing Cab drivers and did the business correct? Yeah, absolutely. And That's even correct. later on, even later on, there are yeah. ways for us to not own cabs. You can finance money from banks once you have a brand name. You can finance money. You can partner up with banks, and you can get the drivers who don't own cabs. They can own their own cab using the bank loan, and then they can repay the bank loan as they make money from the from 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 working for the cab company. there are ways the point of the the moral of the story is that you don't want to own assets if you are trying to own assets you are not going to grow quicker correct my question is after 3 years into the business okay he he, he said he owned a hundred cabs or he was able to add another 100 cabs into his fleet that's correct no he did not own any cabs pappu did not own any assets So after three years, also it was like collaboration. No? The additional hundred cars were collaborated. Yeah. The moral so of the story is that. that you want to keep your business model lightweight. Don't own any yeah. assets. The more assets okay. you will own, the bigger problems you will get. The slower your progress will be. More barriers you will hit. No, of course. Okay, uh, Ankita. Any questions? uh isn't it similar to a collaboration topic but uh, uh, you just in this this webinar you just explained it with an example like uh, you have already explained i think so uh, it's just similar to collaborations and What? a bit of investors as well aha uh -huh. so right? so entire business you know every part of business is connected with, with each other today's topic was to keep your business model lightweight the way you use the way you do it is learning sales optimization uh, having investors having collaborations and doing high ticket low ticket and any other optimization does not matter what optimization you apply the purpose of this webinar is to explain that your business model should be lightweight and yes i have used other um uh, webinars concepts into this webinar as well but mm -hmm. the purpose was not to explain those the in collaboration i did not give you the 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 concept about keeping the business model lightweight in collaborations i told you that you need to you can collaborate with people in order to generate customers for yourself i gave you another uh, different example ha huh, yes so today's uh, today's 
webinar covers some previous concepts that I discussed before, but the purpose is to explain you that you need to keep the business model lightweight. What strategy you deploy to keep that business model lightweight does not matter. I just give you one example, deploying certain strategies, which was investors and collaborations, but there can be other strategies as well. Make mm -hmm. sense? Mm -hmm. Any other questions from anyone?